Hi, it's Mavi, and today's video is inspired by all of the beautiful and adorable fall photos that I am seeing all over my social media. I'm seeing a lot of apple picking happening, a lot of family activities. So I thought this would be a really good time to give you guys this tutorial on this apple pattern. You can also use plaids. That's another fun fall pattern that you can use. Check out my other tutorial for that one. I also wanted to show you how to take this pattern and make a frame so that you can take all of those adorable photos you're snapping with your cell phone and put a frame on it and maybe even email those out to people who don't have social media. So here is a fun project you can do for all of those fun photos you have. Of course we are going to start with our pattern. We're going to start with a new file and we're going to use my very favorite size to make patterns. 150 pixels by 150 pixels with a resolution set at 300. Now that I have my blank file, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in the apples. I am using Photoshop Elements 10 and I have in my custom shape tool an apple shape already. I have several different kinds of shape. came with cherries, apples, pears, all sorts of different things. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my apple and I'm going to draw an apple right in the middle. I'm choosing red. You can choose a different color if you want green apples. You can also. And I'm going to move that to the middle. I recommend using your guides if you want this to be exact. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to transform this layer and I'm going to tilt it a little bit about hmm, somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees. Just tilt it so that it's not straight and I'm going to go up to my filter gallery, go to other and offset this. If it asks you if you want to simplify the shape, say yes or okay. And I'm going to offset this at 75 pixels right and 75 pixels down. It's just going to be half of whatever the size of my file is. Click OK. Next I'm going to go ahead and grab my shape tool and I'm going to draw another apple. And this one's going to be a little bit bigger. Again, move it to the center. And then I'm going to tilt this the opposite direction. I'm not going to offset this one though. I'm going to leave it right in the middle. So there's my basic pattern. Now remember, keep this file handy because when you fill this pattern in, if you want to change the placement or the direction or the position of any of these layers, you can. I'm going to add a blank layer at the bottom and then I'm going to go ahead and go up to Edit, Define Pattern and I'm going to call this my apple pattern. Click OK. Now I can fill in a background. I'm going to make a large background file. I'm going to make this 3 inches by 3 inches and I'm going to use a transparent background. So it's going to be pretty big and it should give me a nice size for my apples. So I fill this in using my paint bucket and I click pattern at the top and then I choose my apple pattern. And then I just fill that in. So there you go. I think it's pretty cute. If the size of the apples are too big or too small you can adjust those also. Now to add this little bit of distressed look I'm going to show you what I did in the filter gallery. So I'm going to first make sure that my foreground color is the color I want to I want my apples to be. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to click on that color it is what I want. Go up to filter and check out the filter gallery. There's a lot of fun stuff on here. You can do a half tone, you can do charcoal, but the one I'm going to use is this crayon and the texture I'm going to use is canvas. Now you can scale this however you want. Just change different things. If you bring up the relief, it's going to bring a little bit more color coming through. So I just want it a little bit. Click OK. And so there's my pattern. Now to make this frame. This is the easiest thing to do. You'll love it. So I'm going to start with a blank file. Because I'm using a picture from my cell phone, I'm going to make this a smaller file. It won't fit and I'll lose resolution otherwise. So I'm going to make it one inch by one inch. Next, I am going to make a couple of layers. The first layer is going to be a fill layer 
and I'm going to fill this with the color white. So before I fill this in, I'm gonna make sure I uncheck pattern because I wanna make sure that I'm using my foreground color. Next, I'm going to drag in my background paper that I made with the distressed apples. And it's a little bit big, so I'm just gonna take the size down to about 30%. And if that's not just right, you can stretch it out. And if you want it bigger, make it bigger, whatever you want. Now, it just looks like a smaller version of this, right? To make the frame, first we're going to take a color that is nowhere on this page. We wanna select it later, so we wanna make sure that we have some kind of random weird color. I'm gonna use orange, and I'm gonna use my rounded rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle or a square in the middle. Adjust it to make sure it's right where you want it. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can leave room for some text if you want. Whenever it's exactly the size you want it, that's gonna represent where your picture goes, so make sure it's enough space. Commit that layer. Now what you're going to do is you're going to select all the layers that have content in them, and you're gonna merge those layers. Now grab your little magic wand and select that colored square and we're going to cut it. So you can either go up to edit and cut or use control X and now that space is gone. So now we actually have a frame. All I have to do now is add my photo in. I'm going to place this photo behind the frame and then I'm just going to move myself wherever I want to go. I'm using me pretend like this is a really cute kid jumping in some leaves or picking apples or something. This is just what I have right now. And there is my frame photo. I can save it and post it if I want. Now if you just want to save the frame to use for later, make sure that you save this file as a PNG file or save it as your Photoshop file. That way you can keep that transparent background. It's really important that this background stays transparent in the middle, otherwise you won't be able to stick your picture right behind it. So make sure you do that. You can also save these for later and share these with other people and they can also put their stuff in. So it's a really fun way to make a little frame. Enjoy making the patterns and try out a couple of the different shapes and have so much fun. Have a wonderful day.